Hey guys, my name is Masimba Wati and I am making a video right now of a PowerPoint presentation that I want to share with you guys at the request of uh, Dr. Chris Fanaman. So first of all, I want to say uh, thank you guys for taking time to listen and I really hope that you guys are safe wherever you are and uh, I pray that each and every one of you uh, makes it through this time with no problems and hopefully maybe we could meet at some point I could check out what you guys are doing so right now it's 20 minutes to 1 a.m. which is uh, the witching hour <laughs> I like I like working in the night I'm a night owl uh, most of my work I do late in the night because you get a lot of free free uh, patches of time and it's quiet and you can really get a lot done so my practice has always been like a night practice I do uh, like the greater part of my work in the night and uh, it's a beautiful night I am just uh, in my apartment right now and um, uh, I have in the background this is Hampton Heights it's a, it's a nice view uh, very cool very inspiring uh, so I just want to start by introducing myself briefly and my practice. I am a sculptor and a sound artist and a researcher. I'm originally from Zimbabwe, born and bred in Zimbabwe. That's where my family is. Currently on a residency program right now at the Chapman Cultural Center. And uh, yeah, I'm working on a project, a couple of things there, which uh, at some point you guys are welcome to walk through and uh, see what I'm working on. Um, so my practice spans uh, a period of 14 years and in those 14 years I moved from being a ceramic artist to being a found objects artist to now a performance artist and a sound artist. So you find a, a lot of overlaps of these disciplines in what I do. So I consider myself a, an interdisciplinary artist. So I'm going to share a couple of images with you guys and explain how I make my creative decisions and uh, how I think about ideas, how I translate things. And um, I will show you also my plans and my uh, the directions that I think my work is going. Uh, and hopefully that will answer some of the questions that you guys have. Uh, but I'm going to provide my email at the end of this presentation and also uh, my YouTube channel link and my Instagram handle so that you guys can check out my performances and some of the stuff that I do and even my website which is under construction but you guys can get an idea of the kind of stuff that I make uh, but um, yeah please feel free to get in touch with me and ask any questions that you have I really would like to contribute to what you're doing. I know that you guys are doing amazing stuff and uh, I will be honored at some point uh, after this uh, period that we are in um, passes to check out what you guys are doing and maybe talk a little bit about what uh, where you guys are taking your practice and um, yeah uh, so Thank you for taking your time to watch this presentation and I hope you enjoy it. Take care. This is the period 2006 and uh, I started out doing a lot of ceramics and uh, using terracotta. Um, I was never a big fan of glaze so most of the work from this period is terracotta so one of the things i did in college was i build a massive body of work that would take me three or four years to complete and put together the reason i did this is i knew that i was not going to have a studio after college so i i just started working like crazy uh, accumulating these half finished projects and unfinished projects and picking them away so that I could work on them uh, years later. 
So if you look at uh, some of the slides here, you will see that 10 years later, I'm still working on some pieces that I started uh, with uh, around 2003, which was my last year of college. So college for me was a time to prepare for the future and sort of like to project what my practice was going to be. Um, this work is terracotta. I think these were about 110 figures. And uh, from as far back as 2003, I was fascinated by sound. If you look at these guys, it's like they are whistling. So the idea was to get a whistle into your head by looking at these guys. So the first time I showed this was in Harare in 2003. The second time was in Harare again, but that was 2006. And this was during a time in Zimbabwe where the government implemented what they called a cleanup campaign. So in this campaign, they were uh, evicting and demolishing, evicting people from their informal homes and demolishing their homes. So it affected a lot of people. So the first time I showed it, it was a political statement. The second time was in 2010, which was the beginning of the Arab Springs uh, revolution, which was uh, centered in Egypt, whereby the North African region saw this uh, wave of mass protest and um, uh, citizen um, demonstration against the current government. And uh, it changed the face of north africa uh forever so but the last time i showed these pieces was in 2016 in stellenbosch south africa during a solo exhibition and it had the title don't worry be happy so you can see all through the years how this piece is shape shifting changing titles sometimes and names i i always do this in my practice i think it's very important to my practice uh, to, to have work that can shape shift or work that can be transformed into other things uh, because I look at ideas as this the idea to me is a spectrum it's, it's not disjointed or fragmented it's a, it's a spectrum whereby you can be able to transform forms to transform elements as you as you go along the years as long as you are grounded on that idea this is a chessboard which um, i created uh, again around 2003 and this was a i gifted this to one of my mentors and in this piece i was basically challenging the idea of race politics as we know it and uh, just looking at another way of of creating simple things like a chessboard and taking away the element of race or the element of color or the binary element that usually translate into translates into race so the way to distinguish these pieces was through texture and not through color so you can see in 2011 um, a couple of years later i am carrying on the same idea but in a different medium this is a uh, one of my first attempts to really uh, move uh, into other kinds of mediums and here i have uh, some goat skin i have uh, some wood happening there and some bone and um, some pins and all sorts of things there but it's basically the same form the same idea is still a chessboard which is not distinguishable by color and uh, but I was beginning to explore other elements which was fascinating to me at that time this um, is 2004 and 2007 and uh, my, my my focus in this period I remember was to uh, provide some structure for my ceramic pieces because I was slowly moving away from using terracotta and then 
um, and going into found objects, but I wanted some structure to the terracotta. I wanted something that would hold the terracotta. So the introduction of found objects at this stage was purely uh, technical. And, but I started thinking of how that could also be part of the narrative and how the aesthetics were more important. So this was a period of growth for me when I was thinking about the balance between the technical and the aesthetic. This is a nine-year period, oh my gosh, where I was uh, really exploring um, one of my favorite uh, motifs which is the horn or horns uh, some of you are guys were asking me to talk about failure and how I deal with failure in my work this is a perfect example because in this work you can see how uh, more or less the same elements appear at different periods in my in, in my work and they are trying to find a place so the the piece that is on the far left uh, is like the final piece that I finished in 2015. But this process actually started around 2006. And this piece was shown in London. And right now it uh, belongs to a friend of mine who is in New Zealand. So you can see a um, series of uh, failures where by the piece was not working in uh, the former compositions and then finally it kind of found a resting place. So this is one of the ways that I work. I work uh, thinking of the principle of impermanence. All the elements in my work are put together in such a way that they can be moved, they can be changed, they can be shifted. I build on a couple of, uh, on a series of uh, temporary decisions. This is how I've always worked. I still work like that today. It's a, it's a, it's an accumulate. My work is an accumulation of temporary decisions that lead to some kind of a composition. Now I'm not going to go deep about the semiotics and the symbolism of the horns um, in this presentation. But at some point, I'd love to uh, make uh, another presentation going deep into why these horns are important to me why for 13 for 12 years i am fascinated with the form and i keep changing it and i keep exploring the variations of that form i remember this show in uh, at the national gallery of zimbabwe in 2009 this was one of the times where i was exploring space as material and uh, I think one of the first time that I actually made an installation piece uh, in public, of course. And uh, as you can see, there is um, the presence of the horn motif is there. And um, the circle, I like circles. I see a lot of circles in my work. And again, there's a big story to that. There's a philosophy to that. There's a reason why I do that, why those things have remained in my work, uh, which at some point I shall be able to share with you guys. Um, again, we come back, you see the ones are coming through. And uh, one of the reasons why I put this presentation together in a way that you guys can see patterns in my work is I want to, I want to be able to share to you or submit to you the idea that you need to follow your obsession. Art is about following passion and obsession. Because when you do that, that is when you get your voice. That is when you discover yourself. That is when you discover your philosophy. Um, before even rationalizing why you are doing things, pursuit is the most important thing. Follow the passion. Follow the obsession. If it's a form, if it's color, if it's a sound, keep working on that sound. Keep inquiring. Keep thinking of variations. That is the only way where you can crack and open some of the mysteries of you as an artist and how your mind works and how your 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 you you feel about certain things. So it becomes a process of self discovery. So the piece that is on the far left was made in Stellenbosch, South Africa. It was a public uh, piece. Uh, the title of it is called Can We Talk for a Minute? 
uh, I got the inspiration from a 1998 hit song by Tevin Campbell. And um, this piece is interactive. These are a couple of uh, letter boxes where you can, the public can come and post letters and the keys are left on the letter boxes so people can come and take out the letters. So it's like a communication point or co a dialogue station of some sort. Uh, this piece was actually made for free. I didn't get paid for this. I didn't, I didn't sell this. So some of you guys were asking me about how, how uh, you can rise up the ladder of networking. This is one of the examples where you have to give gifts. You have to be able to do things for free at some point. I didn't get paid, but this opened a lot of doors for me. I still celebrate today some of the friendships and some of the achievements that came just for uh, through this opportunity to do something for free. Um, horns are coming through again, and um, some new elements in the like the American football vest. This is obviously um, an indicator of my geographical location because I usually just use things that I find around me that I find uh, interesting and that have meaning. And at some point I would talk more about what these things mean to me. But um, I just want to point out some of the skill sets that I was using in this uh, piece. Uh, as you can see, there is some uh, hair braiding. Uh, happening even on top of that helmet which is uh, something that I decided to incorporate in my practice um, later and also the arrival of copper into my practice right now I use a lot of copper this is one of the pieces that uh, is testament to that and this piece is uh, part of a larger installation you guys are going to see in the next slides where this piece is actually located in one of the installations. Wow. Uh, in, this, uh, in this collection of work, I think this is the time where I really discovered that I was keen uh, on sound. I was fascinated by sound. So I started making a series of experiments using the mbira, which is a traditional Zimbabwean instrument. And I was pushing its boundaries a little bit and looking for its variations. And I remember this time I was fascinated by the form of the instrument and not so much the sound. Of course, it was in the back of my mind. Right now, I am so big on sound. Um, some of these can play. But uh, at this at this point, I remember that I was only focusing on uh, the technical aspect of the instrument. So again, a fascination that I started following at that point. And uh, a short period from 2015 to 2016, where I was... Uh, exploring one of my fantasies which was skateboarding which is um, still a fantasy to me it remains in that space as a fantasy and uh, I remember this time I was putting wheels on everything that I could get my hands on and this is some of what you guys see again we go back to the idea of following a fantasy and pursuing a passion as a means of self-discovery in the practice of an artist. This is uh, late 2019 and I am performing in Johannesburg, South Africa. I am activating my sculpture. This is, uh, this was a risk uh, um, position for me where I decided that, hey, I'm going to perform with my sculptures. I've never done this before, but this is the time to activate them. And right now, this is what I do. I make sculptures and I activate them. As you can see, I have elements that has stayed with me in my practice 
from as far back as 13 years ago i have horns in there i have skateboard wheels in there and um it is this fascination with an idea an object or a medium that makes an artist i think that is that counts as research that counts as a practice and a discipline when an artist is able for a long period of time to pursue and to remain fascinated and loyal to ideas or to an object getting lost getting lost is very important this was a detour in my practice i think every artist should take the opportunity to get lost and uh, i was making a lot of masks just for no reason at all and um, employing some skill sets that i don't normally use like stitching and uh, exploring materials like leather and there is a, some drawing too on the leather using a soldering iron so i think the importance of getting lost is you get to learn to 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 feel in a new way or to think in a new way and you get to it's like hitting the reset button so this is one of the periods that i i kind of took a detour and i look forward i always look forward to getting lost in my practice because it always brings new and interesting results i am performing in ann arbor in 2019 and uh, what you see there is a uh, is a setup which has a lot of elements that i have carried on from my practice and uh, i am still carrying up until now i think what is important about this time in my practice or this this period is that i found a way in which i could bring together everything that was important to me in my practice i could bring it into one setting i think that is one of the things that artists are always looking for a way to combine or to consolidate all your interest into one thing and i think i found that in this period um, incorporating a lot of things in that performance as you can see they are uh, they are projections on the wall and i was using my voice there was a, an element of live sound i was using my body everything was kind of working together to create this experience and, and if you guys are interested you can go check out uh, some of these performances that are on my youtube channel which um, you can find on the link in the last slide of this presentation here the i've i've selected a couple of pieces for you guys uh, two of them on the left are from my last exhibition in johannesburg south africa and um, there is some electronics that came into the work there is a television monitor there with the video playing and before that before i put that thing on the wall there were some, there were a couple of tilt sensors uh, and uh, which were activating the video on the screen and um, some technology happening in the work which i think is a uh, another way that i'm i'm exploring uh, another medium but still keeping the same ideas so these pieces are uh, exist as sculptures but also as instruments that you can actually activate and play so i am very excited about this new uh, status of the sculpture that they are not only static but they are actually kind of alive in a way that they could be activated the piece that is on the far right is one of my favorite pieces to date i gave this away as a gift to my mentor and i put it in there because i just want to emphasize the idea of gift giving it's a very important idea to honor the people that have um, contributed in your life or in your practice i think um, it took me a, a a long time to make that decision because i loved the piece but i had to give it away as as a way of honoring i think it's very important for us to to realize that we are always 
uh, building on the foundation that was um, provided for us by some other people. And it's good, it's good to go back and uh, honor those people. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you, guys. Hey, guys, thank you for taking your time and hanging with me here. Uh, here are my contacts. Uh, I've got my email here. I've got uh, my Instagram account, my website where you guys can check out what I'm currently working on. And of course, there's my YouTube channel where you can check out some of the performances that I've done in the past. And I think there are a couple of interviews there too. You can uh, check out what I think about certain things. And um, yeah, I throw a lot of experiments on my Instagram channel and uh, everything that I'm messing with in the studio gets thrown on there. So until we meet again, thank you guys and take care.